What's up, guys? Don't be Rex here, back with another video. Today, we're reacting to a uh, continuation of early Muslim expansion. I think, yeah, we got, this is the rest yeah, of it yeah. right here, guys. Uh, so far, the battle, yeah, last yeah. battle is crazy, yeah. bro. Like, that's like the biggest battle so far. Yeah, biggest battle. I don't know. Yeah, but he was using, like I said last time, he was using the same tactic. Yeah, yeah same tactic. And it was followed for hopefully, mm -hmm. well, not hopefully, but let's see if he, uh, the. Roman army or Byzantine army catch on to what he's doing. I know, right? Because Khalid just been destroying yeah. people, bro, with his cavalry. So, if you uh new to the channel, guys, please hit that subscribe button, guys. Hit that like button if, uh, if you enjoyed the video. Also, comment below whether the video is you want to react to. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Persian forces made no move to capitalize on it, either hoping that the attack was over or being preoccupied with other matters. This gave Caliph Umar time to come up with a response. Lacking an immediate source of manpower, the pragmatic Rashidun Caliph raised another army from the previously untapped tribes who rebelled against the Caliphate during the Ridda Wars, including the Banu Tamim and Banu Jadila. These warriors, supplemented by additional contingents mustered by Umar, were gathered and sent north, but problems were still present. Quarreling between many of the tribal chiefs prompted the caliph to appoint a trusted paragon to supreme command, who was absolutely beyond reproach. After being talked out of leading the army himself, mm. Umar's commander would be Sa'd bin Abi Wakas, the seventh person to embrace Islam and a companion of the Prophet. The presence of such a respected general united the army in spirit. Additionally, Many more warriors joined themselves to Saad's mm. invasion force as it marched north up more the Medina Road Shoot. in May of 636. Yeah. By the time it reached the Euphrates region for a second time, the Muslim army was probably the most formidable Persia had faced so far. Unfortunately for Saad, resistance to his advance was soon in coming. Mm. The best Sassanid general, Rostam, who basically ruled the court of the 12-year-old Shah Yazdegerd III, wanted to fight smaller battles to minimize risk. Oh, but that decision was unpopular with the nobles and commoners alike, as the Battle of the Bridge probably made the empire complacent. Therefore, the general departed the Persian capital at the head of a massive imperial force, beelining straight for the Muslims encamped near Cadicia. The two opposing armies finally caught sight of one another across the span wow. of the Atlantic Canal, about 30 Persian miles army got east a of lot here. Of people. You they, After they an exhausting these. march in the midst of Iraq's blistering summer, Rostam ordered his men to take up positions and encamp across from Saad's army. Rather than immediately mounting an assault across the canal, the bulk of both armies remained on their own side of the waterway for several months with the peace only punctuated by small scouting missions and raids. Rostam probably knew that the previous Islamic army had been defeated during a botched river crossing, oh, yeah. and was therefore content to wait and receive Saad's attack, hoping it would okay, happen Okay, nah. He type of general like you yeah. know what he's doing already, yeah. based off he looked previous at the battles. previous battles and what went wrong. The Muslims, meanwhile, were fighting a two-front war, so keeping the Mesopotamian army passive for the time being oh, was prudent. In Syria, their army was engaged against the Romans in a campaign which culminated in mid-August at the Battle of Yarmouk. With the Christian Empire's war machine broken, Umar was free to dispatch reinforcements to Saad's force. In the hope of keeping Rostam occupied, the Muslim leader sent repeated embassies to treat with his Persian counterpart demanding that the Zoroastrians submit to Islam in return for peace. <laughs> With the Sassanid commander unwilling to convert, yeah, and reinforcements no. streaming into their camp, the Muslims challenged their enemy to battle, arraying their forces in formation, and allowing the Sassanids to cross the canal, withdrawing a mile to the rear. He, With the he's the canal head blocking bridge, the bridge occupied by Muslim guards, Rostam's imperial army spent the night hours damming the waterway with debris to enable passage. At dawn, Rostam, seated on his throne, ordered his army across, and had the army advance in battle formation against the arrayed Muslim forces. 
the climactic struggle for Persia was about to begin. Hmm. The army under the authority of Rostam Faroxad was likely made up of, at most, 60,000 wow. Sassanid troops. Even a Sassanid field army at the absolute apex of the empire's power probably would not have been able to muster such massive numbers, and it is even more unlikely that the politically divided, militarily exhausted realm of 628 onwards could bring to bear anything more than 60,000. Rostam's bulwark was also a multi-ethnic army, having come together from regions all across the vast expanse of the territory ruled by the House of Sassan, from Azerbaijan to Khurasan. It included among its ranks Kurds, Armenians, Turks, Arabic allies, and units from many other So this is made up of different people. Yeah. The right and left center units of the Imperial Army were under the command of Jalinus and Birzan respectively, and in total comprised 30,000 warriors, 20,000 melee infantry and bowmen in the first line, and 10,000 cavalry in the second. Among these troops were 10,000 professionally trained Persian immortals, revered elite fighters who chained themselves together as a signal to the enemy that they were prepared to die rather than retreat. Wow! <laughs> Bounded by swampland which was difficult to traverse, the Sassanid left and right wings were led by Miran and Homuzan, both illustrious generals drawn from high-born Persian clans. Each led 10,000 infantry in their front rank, backed by 5,000 cavalry behind. In front of Rostem's line was a screen of 33 male-clad elephants. 18 of them were deployed in the center, while the remainder were split equally on either wing. Rostam himself, donning ornate armor, mounted his raised throne just behind the center, accompanied by a small strategic reserve. About a mile to the west, Saj's 30,000 warriors drew up in a manner that mirrored their adversaries, four tribally organized divisions, with infantry in the first line and cavalry in the second. In addition to the Muslim forces from Arabia lie, proper, bro. Christian Arabs from the border of Sassanid territory, and even some captured Persian officers had joined the army after converting to Islam. Although Khalid, yeah, I'll never look like he was yeah. capable of deploying his army properly, ailments and injury prevented him from mounting a horse and exercising effective tactical control. Instead, the companion general appointed a trusted deputy, Khalid bin Afuta, to carry out his immediate orders, and took up a strategic position atop the fortress of nearby Uzay. The various units were commanded by their tribal chieftains, and included men such as Shirabil bin think, Simt, a veteran of the Rida Wars. You think would Khalid not like actually like on a horse doing command? You think they're gonna hurt him? Mm, no. You don't think so? I think it is. No. I don't think it will. And Syrian campaign, who led the Muslim left wing. As Rostam's large army continued to form up, Muslim soldiers took part in their usual noon prayer, donned their armor, and waited. By the early afternoon hours, the massive Persian army was finally ready to fight. Rostam's plan was Hi. simple and to the point. Smash both flanks of the enemy army, and then smash into their exposed center. The she Battle really of like Al-Qadisya began do, with a heavy barrage of arrows loosed by the Sassanid archers, whose superior bows and higher quality arrows inflicted massive casualties on their lightly armored counterparts. The Muslims attempted to return the favor, but their low-powered bows and inferior arrows resulted in the missiles bouncing harmlessly off the Persian heavy armor. Wow. The amused Sassanid troops mocked the Muslim archers by repeating the word spindles, spindles, as the impotent arrows fell harmlessly. <laughs> With most of the Islamic front line pinned in place by Rostam's lethal storm of arrows, the general ordered a seven-strong elephant corps on no, his the left elephant to game from the charge left. directly no, he got at the Muslims opposing him, followed yeah, he goes, by the rest they got elephants in their front too, though. Frightened by the oh, oncoming they, no. titans, the Rashidun no, mounts forced their riders to scatter from their position, leaving the infantry exposed. Beset by Miran's flank and lacking cavalry support, the Muslim warriors fell back slowly 
suffering casualties but not breaking until they don't break, break, break at all. Zad, witnessing the danger his right flank was in from Uzeb, had go, two units of cavalry around. from the unengaged center dispatched to reinforce and shore up the line. One of these contingents struck Miran's troops in the front, while the other hit them in the flank, pushing the Persians back to their starting position after a fierce fight. I don't know how they get you every time. Every time. Observing that his attack on the Muslim right was stalling, Rostam completely changed tack. He dispatched part of his immediate reserve under Burman to keep that part of the Muslim army locked in place, then ordered the Sassanid right and right center to see, advance, see how he pull it fronted yeah, by you're elephants plugging hole, and yeah. covered by another deadly volley of arrows. Again, the vanguard of elephants panicked Rashidun mounts and forced the horsemen to flee for infantry cover. This state of affairs could not continue if victory for Islam was to be attained. Saad, realizing he had to do something about the Sassanids' assault beasts, had orders conveyed that light troops from the Arabian Bani Tamim tribe deal with them. Darting in and amongst the massive elephants with considerable skill and daring, the agile warriors cut the cables which kept the elephants' mounting platforms atop the animals and showered the occupants with missile fire. A vast oh, number of the isolated elephant riders were killed where they stood, while the rest led their exhausted war mounts back behind the main yeah, so line. The general Sassanid attack on this side of the field was also wrestled back. In an attempt to take advantage of his enemy's lack of elephants, Saad ordered a general attack all across Whoa. the field. It's it not is said that while yeah, the Sassanids yeah. were equipped better than their foe, the Muslims were superior fighters. This level of skill allowed a unit in Saad's center to punch through the Persian line and get close to the enthroned Rostam. Descending from his position, the general drew his sword and entered the fray personally along with some retainers. With the army's morale bolstered by the presence of their leader, the Muslim counterattack was repelled and the front re-established. Hmm. By nightfall, the last of the day's fighting had come to an end. That was a fierce yeah. first His day. first dreadful day, also known as the Day of Disorder by the battered Rashidun warriors, was over. The wounded were gathered and cared for by women in the Muslim camp and trained surgeons of the Sassanid army while the remainder rested. When dawn came, both armies once again lined up for battle, facing off until mid-morning. At around noon, a thousand reinforcements from Syria under Keka bin Amr began streaming onto the field to reinforce the hmm, Muslim army, one thing, coming nobody, ten they, at a the time so side, as to give the illusion the of vast numbers. This increased the morale of the Muslim army tenfold, and Saad immediately ordered another charge all across the line. Despite the heavy casualties that his troops inflicted on the Sassanids, the enemy ranks remained coherent and unbroken, mainly due to the force of their heavily armored Yeah, cavalry. they got good, better armor. Casualties increased as the fighting grew more and more brutal, but after two hours of fruitless fighting, both sides pulled back. The Muslims were trading well, four dead Persians for each of their own, hmm. but Rostam, trusting in his superior numbers, was content to grind Saad's force into the dust. On the Muslim side, Kaka, displaying his energetic and restless nature, used the break in fighting to cover the camels that the Rashidun army brought with wooden structures, making them look to the untrained eye of a horse like unfamiliar, terrifying beasts. <laughs> When fighting resumed not long after, the disguised camels were paraded in front of the charging Persian cavalry, spooking the horses into breaking ranks. Sensing an advantage, Saad had the army attack along the entire front again. This time, without elephants or cavalry to bolster their ranks, zealous Muslim warriors scythed into the Persians' units, viciously routing many of them towards the waterway behind and almost causing the entire Sassanid army to buckle with the shock. However, Rostam's personal intervention and unmoving confidence allowed his shattered contingents to yep, get he gotta get uh, truth morale. Yeah. Throughout the evening hours, Persian and Rashidun troops engaged in a slogging match, which, as the sun dipped beneath the horizon, managed to painstakingly throw the Muslims into retreat. With that, 
both exhausted armies retired for the night. When daylight came on the third day, and the armies were arraying for battle, Sa'd's troops were met with an unwelcome surprise. The enemy ranks parted briefly, and through them marched the mighty elephants, well, they got elephants and armed, now each surrounded by a protective ring of infantry and cavalry. When mid-morning came, Rostam had his archers unleash another extended arrow volley, which locked the Muslims in place. As this barrage concluded, the entire Sassanid army, fronted by the terrifying elephants, began inexorably trudging onward. Suddenly, as they approached Sa'd's line, the infantry shielding each elephant's front shifted aside according to plan, enabling the giant war beasts to crash into the Muslim line at close That's range. That's good, bro. Like, the I'm riders saying. were able to escape and fled without delay, but the infantry weren't so lucky. Sa'd's entire army was brutally shoved back, losing hundreds of men who were gored by tusks wow. and by the elephant's feet or put to the sword by Persian arms. Rostam caught the smell of blood in the water. In order to end the battle, he sent a cavalry division on a deep flanking attack against okay, the castle now. itself, but this was rapidly countered by a unit of Muslim riders. Although that attempt failed, the army of Islam was visibly about to disintegrate, despite the coming of even more reinforcements from the west. Taking advice from a defective Persian soldier at the last possible moment, Rashidun light infantry slid through the ranks, surrounded the two lead elephants and blinded them, before swarming the creatures and their onboard missile troops. With the elephant alphas killed, other beasts along the line were overwhelmed and killed in the same manner. Many others, driven into a rage by pain and unable to see through mutilated eyes, turned 180 degrees and stampeded towards the canal, crashing oh, through no. the Persian ranks and disordering Rostam's army. Sa'd ordered yet another full-scale assault, impacting upon the Sassanids with devastating force. al qadisya was devolving into a war of attrition. Yeah, Not whoever last in yeah. on the day of hardship brought the fighting to an end, but the soldiers' sheer exhaustion gradually led the troops to disengage at sunrise the next day. He had him. Wow, that's Both crazy. Both armies seemed to be at breaking point, but it still wasn't clear who the victor would be. Right. As both armies rested, Kaka decided to make a decisive move. Under the cover of a brief sandstorm, he and 700 troops launched an attack on the blinded Persian center, breaking through the line and approaching Rostam. Isolated and disoriented, the Sassanid general was found by a Rashidun soldier and slain. Wow! The fighting continued until rumors of their commander's fate spread around the Persian army. At that point, the center finally cracked and routed towards the river, followed wow. shortly after by... Bro, that is the way crazy! He, the, way he, the way he planned sneak attacks is crazy! Like, Both that's flanks. crazy! The Imperial it's Army like of the that. Sassanid Empire had been defeated. The Sassanids lost more than 20,000, <laughs> while the Muslim losses were less than 10,000. Wow, and How? Still that's more. crazy! Although the Muslims seemingly scored decisive victories against two of the strongest empires of the period, the war in the region was hardly over. The next episodes of this series on early Muslim expansion will take us to Egypt, Constantinople, Central Asia, Spain, and France. Hmm. So make sure you are subscribed to our channel and have pressed the bell button. We would like to... Like I said, bro, that is crazy how Khalid battle tactics was, bro. Like, he was just undefeated, unstoppable, bro. Wow. Like, he really couldn't stop it, bro. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, they, they had a, a far advantage with the elephants. Then yeah. they found out how to defeat them. Then, and in the, in the reason that killed half of them people yeah. as well, bro. So, guys, if you want to see more, uh, please hit that like button. Hit that if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button, guys. Uh, comment below what videos you want to react to, and we see you guys in the next video. Peace.